It is the land of the ancient gales, the tartan, the pipes, where the sheep outnumber the people. From the misty isles of the west, to the highland crags and glens, to the graceful boulevards of Edinburgh. There is no place in the world like Scotland. Its historic capital, Edinburgh, the home of Robert Burns, Charles Darwin, and Adam Smith. It is Paris with a Scottish lilt, a city of architecture, monuments to a proud past, the fashionable Royal Mile, and dominating the skyline, Edinburgh Castle. Well, there's been a castle here for at least a thousand years, and it's developed over the years, um, getting bigger and bigger until you see what you get today. Colonel Andrew Middlemiss of the King's Own Scottish Borders of Edinburgh Castle. Edinburgh Castle is busy, to say the least. Um, on a good day, there are 40,000 people coming through here every day. But tourists be advised of the proper pronunciation. It seems Americans often say Edinburgh. And I'm afraid I'm always rather rude to Americans to call it the right name. We call it Edinburgh. <laughs> so not Edinburgh, please. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Got it. Thank you. Edinburgh Castle is also the home of the Army School of Bagpipe Music. Okay, let's try it a couple of ways. As you might imagine, a class of full bagpipes would be a tad loud and difficult to teach. So instruction is done using what's called a practice chanter. Okay, don't rush it. Make sure we get all these doublings in and also the expression. Right, Corporal Johnson. But in Scotland, bagpipes are much more than a musical instrument. For centuries, they were at the head of Scottish armies, for England and against her. Mainly by the Scots, it's been used uh, to, to very good effect in many battles and um, it inspires many Scottish soldiers to carry on that extra yard. A confession. One of my life's ambitions is to learn to play the bagpipe. So, here goes. <laughs> now what? <laughs> well, <laughs> you need to blow considerably harder than oh. this. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that ambition. My apologies to pipers everywhere. With all its sophistication, Edinburgh was considered a hollow capital by many Scots. Its people governed from London 400 miles to the south. But a new Labour government in Britain has brought change in the form of an affirmative vote on devolution or local control. Scots voted by a wide margin to establish their own parliament, by a slimmer margin to levy their own taxes. Nationalist Scots saw the vote as a move toward eventual independence, while others thought it might actually cool separatist passions. I felt it was a good idea, yes. Wanted um, freedom for Scotland to a degree. I think that's probably the greater thrust behind uh, devolution is the, the fact that we can appoint our own government and not have to suffer someone else's government, if you like. It will be a couple of years before Scotland has its parliament in place. But for now, my biggest concern is finding my way while driving north on the left side of the road. My destination, the Scottish Highlands. Rolling hills and mountains as high as 4,000 feet, the landscape dotted with small villages. Among them, Crothy. You may know it by another name. And the royalty come here to Balmoral and and that is more or less the main interest here. Queen Elizabeth's summer castle, Balmoral. That's it right down there. Yeah. All right, well, Peter and crew actually visited Scotland just weeks after Princess Diana's death. And as mm -hmm. you can imagine, there are many people visiting Balmoral Castle to pay tribute and is also where Queen Elizabeth passed in just September. You know, Peter, um, back to his bagpipes, he says he never lost the desire mm -hmm. to learn the bagpipes. He actually has a friend who's a member of a police pipe band who's offered to teach him. So he says he's not giving up yet. It probably can't get any worse I than it was. <laughs> we love you, Peter, but take some lessons. Take some lessons, <laughs> all right.